Welcome to the Jerry's Movie Review Channel. I am Jerry. Today, I am giving a review of the movie The Little Mermaid. As always remember there will be spoilers. Disney's live-action adaptations of their cherished cartoon classics have come off as an opportunistic money grab with mixed outcomes. Instead of creating unique content, it seems that the attitude was, here's something people like already. Simply offer it to them once more, but in a little different format. Some have actually been enchanting, David Lowry's Pete's Dragon, Kenneth Branagh's Cinderella, while others have been pointless experiments in glossy, computer-generated images, Dumbo, last year's terrible Pinocchio. The Little Mermaid is superior to the vast majority of similar films in that it preserves the essential elements of the 1989 original while also significantly developing the plot and characters. In retrospect, the story of a mermaid who strikes a Faustian deal in order to explore the human world and search for true love feels a bit antiquated. Ariel is a curious and disobedient girl who essentially transitions from being a king's daughter to a prince's wife. The iconic songs by Howard Ashman and Alan Menken, which provide the soul and framework of the movie, are largely preserved here, including the obscenely catchy, Oscar-winning Under the Sea. The young actress cast as Ariel more than meets the task in filmmaker Rob Marshall's version, where Ariel has more nuance and character. In the lead character, Halle Bailey shines, expressive, vivacious, and utterly likable, with a blend of girlish charm and womanly edge. She discovers novel and enlivening ways to incorporate songs, plot points, and even particular conversation passages that the original's devoted followers have long cherished. And her performance of the song Part of Your World, which we have all heard numerous times, is quite moving. Bailey is capable of meeting the physical and emotional demands of her character, and she merits to be a big star. She greatly benefits from the fact that this Little Mermaid has more character development for both Ariel and Prince Eric, which makes their connection make actual sense beyond a fleeting, superficial desire. This edition also makes the movie almost an hour longer than the original, although it still runs along at a respectable clip. The similarities between their attempts to defy their overbearing parents' demands and develop their own identities and goals may be seen in David McGee's script. Jonah Howarking has more to him than just being the stereotypically blandly attractive Disney prince, he even has his own I Want song as Eric. In case it's been a while, a quick recap the youngest of King Triton's seven daughters, Ariel, is eager to explore the surface and discover what makes people tick. Her father forbids it because he thinks people are aggressive predators. With the aid of her fish buddy Flounder, she has the audacity to challenge him and ultimately succeeds in saving the courageous adventurer Prince Eric from a storm. She makes a deal with the sea witch Ursula to exchange her transcendent voice for a set of legs and a trip to the human realm after falling in love with her. By the end of the third day, if she hasn't had her true love's kiss, she'll be permanently obligated to Ursula. The bravery and generous nature of Ariel are highlighted in this adaptation of the fairy tale. Additionally, it enables her to spend more time with Eric and develop a stronger bond with him. Eric believes she is a stunned shipwreck victim and is unaware that she actually saved him. It's a brilliant touch to have Ariel explain ocean facts to Eric, even if she does so in silence. The opportunity to swap the uncomfortably high-heeled boots she was given at the castle for a pair of cozy sandals is also a plus. Ariel is not completely silent during her time at the surface world because to one of the smart touches that lets her to continue singing in her head. One of the many hearty chuckles in the film comes from the manner she tricks Eric into figuring out her name. The supporting actors all energetically stride, or swim, into their roles. As always, Davy Diggs is excellent in his role as Sebastian, the crab sent by King Triton to keep an eye on his daughter. The king is played with seriousness and tenderness by Javier Bardem. Aquafina had huge shoes to fill when she assumed the part of the witty seagull scuttle played by Buddy Hackett, and she delivers her trademark smart Alex style. In keeping with that, 
Melissa McCarthy kills it as Ursula, stepping in for the late Pat Carroll and giving the character her own fiery spin. But the film's primary flaw is its visual effects. If you'll excuse the pun, Marshall surely knows his way around a big-budget musical. For Chicago, he was a nominee for an Academy Award. However, the underwater action frequently appears flat and manufactured in a way that is distant. This is especially true when attempting to simulate the long, beautiful hair of the mermaids blowing about them. Bright colors abound in the Under the Sea production act, and the intricate choreography of the sea life is delightful. However, it falls short of fully capturing the sensation of being underwater. The live-action scenario is particularly challenging for Flounder, played by Jacob Tremblay, especially above the water's surface. When it comes to aquatic realms, once you've been to Pandora, there is no turning back. But the made-up Caribbean island where the Little Mermaid is set is undoubtedly a relaxing getaway. I hope you enjoyed this review, if you did please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to the channel.